Hello, my name is Fernando Velez. I am Chief Data Technologist with Persistent Systems. I hope everybody is doing fine and adjusting to this new period. I am proposing here a new series on data strategy. Uh, and today I want to talk about data quality and how it impacts the value you can get out of your data when you use it strategically. I want to start with a simple definition of data strategy and why it is important for you and for your organization. So data strategy is a conscious design of data management and analytics processes and technology to support the overall organization's strategic business goals. So in short, it is a well-designed data capability, organization and cultural mindset for using data as a strategic asset. Data strategy is important because in the emerging digital economy, data is the lifeblood of a modern organization. It supports and enhances your business processes. It improves your interactions with your customers and your suppliers. And you can innovate with data in new products and services and come up with new business models. In short, it can be used for driving decisions at every level. There are several drivers for data strategy. And as I said, today I'm going to talk about one of them, namely improving your data operations and in particular, improving the quality of your data. There are other drivers for data strategy, and we will take a look at them in the next videos. For example, managing privacy risks or improving your analytics uh, for improving your, enhancing your business processes. So data quality. So I'm sure that I have, you have heard like me, the following stories. Sales team members entering account names with spelling errors. So the revenue allocation for the marketing analysis department will be misrepresented or in a manufacturing company, the maintenance department delivering uh, the replacement of a product at the wrong address, which was entered by someone in the customer service department, or in a hospital where different electronic medical uh, record systems uh, have different clinical terminologies and clinical and diagnose codes. So when a physician is trying to build its patient cohort, when working on a clinical trial for a medication on a heart condition, then he will have trouble finding, finding patients diagnosed with a, a given heart disease using those patient records. So data has a credibility problem. You may need to start by seeing if you have that problem, which translates into how to measure quality. Well, here is a simple method I found, very useful, authored by someone called Thomas Redman, a well-known consultant in data quality. He calls it the Friday afternoon measurement method, and it's aimed at managers whose job depend on data. Let's take a look. So this method has four simple steps. You start by assembling the last 100 data records your group used or created. Here you can see customer orders. That's what your uh, group does. If you had been doing something else, for example, engineering drawings, then you will have done you know, uh, analysis on engineering drawings. You select 10 or 15 critical data attributes within the data record. You lay them down. You ask your colleagues with knowledge about the data to join you in this two-hour meeting that happens on the Friday afternoon. That's why the uh, method is called like this. Then you work record by record and you ask your colleagues to mark obvious errors in a noticeable color. So for example, here, uh, the first record has a null value in its size the 100 record, the last record has a wrong address, and so on and so forth. In this example, only two thirds, so 67 out of 100 of the records were created correctly. Most people would say this is a, a poor performance. And interestingly, it turns out that it's even above average, at least in a study from a couple of years ago that involved 75 managers from different companies. Well, here are the results. So on the horizontal axis, we have bins of uh, correct data records uh, obtained during these experiments. And in the vertical axis, the percentage of departments uh, that uh, obtain those results. So the last bin, uh, 97 to 100 uh, correct data records, is what most people would say it's acceptable for uh, data quality. And only 3% 
got that result, which is quite remarkable, quite incredible. So a couple of other things to note. First, the, the extreme wide variation of results. And second, uh, the fact that um, uh, about half of the experiments got below the 57 uh, number of correct data records range. So this experiment, in fact, opens is an eye-opener uh, and provides evidence that at least data, when created, is, you know, is quite bad. So this experiment points at data entry by employees being the culprit, the cause of bad data. And this correlates very interestingly with a survey done by the Data Warehousing Institute back in 2006. So this survey was taken by 399 respondents from different companies. And uh, uh, they were asked here with, uh, you know, which of the following uh, causes often contribute to uh, data quality problems. And there were multiple choice allowed. And here are the results. So data entry, you can see at 75%. Inconsistent definition for common terms is another big one. Uh, we all know that there are multiple ways of representing the same concept. People struggle with choosing the best or simply with aligning with one. At one extreme, there are different meanings often for the same concept. The other one interesting here is data migration by users. This is a system cause. And uh, it has been pointed out that the data may be migrated, but the governance process are not migrated. So frequently after migration, the quality of the data degrades. And the last one I want to talk a little bit about, mixed ex expectations. Well, different types of workers and applications require different levels of data quality, which comes down to the very definition of data quality, which is the state of data being uh, uh, complete, conform or consistent, or being accurate, or being timely, or being uh, compliant to integrity constraints that makes that data fit for a specific use in areas such as analytics, operations, or planning. Uh, of course, the goal of a data quality initiative is to improve the content of data. Fitness for use, well, the data doesn't need to be perfect, and different types of uh, people require different quality levels. So, for example, here, on the same purchasing data records that could have been made by customers in the past two years, a salesperson for making a good sales call just needs a rough description of the type and amount of purchases that customers may have had. A marketing analyst, his uh, goal is to create propensity models and he needs more details about customer transactions and demographics and can work around some missing data. And But however, a financial analyst he needs to deliver accurate forecasts and reconcile with an operational system, so he needs to track customer purchases down to the penny. So we have seen that organizations are having a hard time in data, data quality. So at the heart of it, the main reasons why this is the case, we believe, is because in practice it's nobody's problem. There is neither ownership nor accountability for quality, which is the starting point, by the way, of any data governance initiative, as we will see shortly. So today, most companies delegate the authority for managing the quality of their, their data to the IT department. The IT of, department, of course, must be involved in the process, but it doesn't have the clout to eliminate the root causes of bad quality. They are not empowered to enforce new behaviors. They are not empowered to change the offending business processes. So now let's talk about the costs induced by bad data quality. Well, there are two kinds of costs. First, the direct costs, uh, which are those, you know, the time spent in correcting mistakes and the problems you have with dealing with bad data, those are direct. And then indirect costs, which we will talk a second later. Um, so there is a rule, the rule of 10, that has been developed by observation by these people here, Labovitz, Sang Chang, and Rosansky, back in 92, that has been verified over and over again, which is it costs 10 times more to correct a mistake rather than preventing it in the first place. And likewise, 10 times more dealing with a mistake, or the consequences of a mistake in data, rather than correcting it. So, for example, consequences are delivering a product to the wrong address, 
or spending so much more time in building up your patient cohort or even bringing the wrong patients. Now, uh, how much does it cost uh, really in terms of uh, real money? It has been um, uh, shown by Experian and Experience Matters that it's about 15 to 25% of revenue of a typical company. And in terms of uh, absolute amounts, IBM has estimated that the loss for the U.S. economy is around $3.1 trillion a year, which those are staggering figures. The um, indirect costs, well, those are very different to measure. It's about the loss of reputation because of your angry customers and lost opportunities due to weakened decision making because basically you cannot trust your, your data, so you cannot have any strategy that is driven by your data. So now that we know a bit more about the costs of data quality, of course, what we want to have is you know, less errors and less cost per error. So the obvious route is preventing errors in the first place that will be less costly and that will also go a long way in um, eliminating the root causes. Now, for some reason, this is not exactly the first reaction that companies have when they are shown this. And the reaction is to launch a massive effort to clean up the existing bad data. And guess what? They task IT about it who will do whatever they can and they will talk to the data creators. But then, as we said before, they are not empowered to change behaviors or business processes. Uh, and you can and you may want to make one-off cleanups with IT involved, but then not to bet your data strategy on ongoing cleanup because this will only solve the analytics problem and your business processes are left still suffering. So summarizing up to here, we have said three things. One, the vast majority of data used for business seems to have an unacceptable quality problem. So unless you have hard evidence to the contrary, you should at least suspect that your data may have a quality problem. Number two, direct business costs are huge, somewhere between 15 to 25% of revenue. Uh, and then number three, uh, indirect costs such as lost reputation because of angry customers or bad decisions from bad data are unmeasurable and must also be enormous. I would like to spend the last minutes of this video giving you some tips on how to make the business case for data quality. So first, start by mapping out business processes, your relevant ones, the ones where you think there is business value involved and where you suspect there is a problem with data quality. Chances are you may want to focus in business processes where customers are involved. Given that customer data is especially susceptible to quality problems in your organization, according to this TDWI survey in 2006. Second, talk to people involved in executing that business process to identify pain points. For each pain point, see if there is a, an issue related to low data quality. Once you are done reviewing the pain points, you will see how process failures are impacted by low quality data. So the next step is to assign a monetary value to the cost of these business process failures. Hopefully you have a good way to estimate the costs. Otherwise, you might want to remember the rule of thumb, the 1-10-100 rule of thumb. And remember, we are dealing with mistakes here, so the multiplier is 100. At this point, you have half of the financial equation for your business case, namely the anticipated gain due to the reduction in costs by eliminating the process failures due to bad data. You need to now get to the other half, which is the cost of a sustainable environment for data quality. Such sustainable environment is a data governance program, one in which you partner with the business to try to eliminate the pain points of living with bad data. Don't let this become an IT-only initiative. A data governance program should allow you to get to the heart of the data quality problem that organizations have, which is the lack of accountability for quality. There is a new role, which is the data steward, which is basically tasked with identifying and addressing the sources of data quality problems in your organization. They should work 
with IT and they should work with the business to come up with the right rules and policies for eliminating the quality problems. And then there is the data owner, which is a data steward who, which is empowered with the authority to enforce the rules and is accountable for quality of data within their own domain. We will talk more about data governance programs in the next video, as well as the technology that might be involved depending on your case. And that will complete what you need to consider to fund a data governance program to describe thoroughly your business case. So summarizing, we have insisted that you should adopt a proactive approach at improving your, the quality of your data by involving the business, as opposed to a reactive approach uh, involving only IT. So remember, it will be virtually impossible to become a data-driven organization in a digital economy if you cannot depend on your data. Thank you.